What's going on, you flatulent fisticuffers? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Grunt Speak, not so. Live from the lair! It's pre recorded. I'm Toxic Male. That's the uh, chubby chasener. Uh, I don't know. Chasener. 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 Chase Tassener. I don't know. The chubby chaser. Ch- I think that's the most accurate one that chasener. I can possibly throw out there. That's like a <laughs> chastising chaser. Yes. I like it. Yes. And uh, from his hog slaying days. Look, man. Lots of lasagna. Old... Those love handles came from somewhere. <sighs> that was a lot. Uh, they came from Ranger School, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> But that's neither here nor there. Today we actually have a fan email sent to us by a gentleman who wishes to remain anonymous. And the title of this email is simply Girlfriend's Crazy Mom and My Father's Advice. Dear Pop and Toxic Mail, I'm a longtime listener of your show and I wanted to tell my story. Hopefully you can find some time to read it on the air. Long story short, before going home for the holidays, I ordered an engagement ring at a local jewelry store. Shortly after New Year's, I was at the same store asking for my money back. (laughs) (laughs) Well then, uh, could it be because uh, behind the scenes she was getting a little... Uh, Yeah, she was getting uh, her throat long stroked by uh, somebody. (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm just making fun, bro. Don't get get mad at me. Prefer the long stroke, not the short stroke. Yeah. In my story, there are tons of lessons and excellent advice that I would like to get to as many men as possible. Chief among them is the advice that I received from my dad. I think there are a lot of issues with men stemming from the fact that their fathers refuse to give them frank advice. My dad is not one of them. Hopefully his words can help some other men out there. Here is what happened. I met my girlfriend in early 2021. We were together for a total of two years. By the time I met her, I was well-versed in red pill content, so I figured I was well-equipped to navigate any nonsense she might throw at me. Still dick thinking. I I mean, that interferes with red pill knowledge left and right. What are you going to do? I mean, I'm just telling you. I've seen it before, and I've done it before. When you think with the dicky, you get into situations that are a little bit sticky. Yes, you do. Gentlemen, I was wrong. I actively recognized red flag after red flag and disregarded every single one of them because she know she knew how to pull the crank on the slot machine and make it so that it would spit more than quarters, if you know what I mean. It was a jack-off jackpot every time. <laughs> <laughs> jack-off jackpot. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. She was sweet, listened to me, wanted children, and politically we agreed on the major topics. Say this is uh, something that we're going to be talking about. I think we're going to do a whole stream on this. I call it the red camouflage. Yeah. Women, especially as they approach the age of 30 and they suddenly realize that the men feminism told them they should want, those guys can't provide for them. They're not on their grind. They're not go-getters. They think like they do. They blame other people for everything, and they think the government needs to step in and write them a blank check. Well, those guys... Not so good in the long term. Just saying. So they pretend to be red-pilled and try to hook in guys that are actually on their grind, can provide. Uh You're talking uh, feminist chameleons. Yeah, and they actually have a testosterone level that's, you know, greater than their shoe size. (laughs) Nice. We were actively planning our life together. However, while I was focused on the future, I completely missed what was right there in front of me. A big bowl of crazy... With sour cream and shredded cheese on top. Uh, and those are both from you. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you right now. Two years is not enough time to, you know, interact with a no. woman to come to the conclusion that you want to spend the rest of your life with her. No. But hey, you know, th- there is no one size fits all in this situation no, ever. And, like, I literally threw my own flying crossbody cock block oh. in my life several times. That's why I'm doing this show. So you can avoid <laughs> the flying crossbody cock block. Or the flying cock straws. And d- the don't make the mistakes I made and fucking be happy. First and foremost, her mom was never married. Overeducated, loud, masculine, overweight, can't understand normal thinker from New York City. Shocker! Wow, that by itself. The, the, I would have been like, okay, cut sling load, but we're out. Oh, yeah, no, no. Did we or did we not do a show called Recon the Mother? We did indeed. I spoke this. That was like four and a half years ago. Man, I'm longer than that. I think yeah. it was before we even got the bar. Because that, that is one of the classic mistakes men make: is they never recon the mother. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and just because she may or may not be on the best of terms with her mom doesn't mean that she's not like her mother. Correct. We are all screwed up funhouse mirrors of the parents <laughs> who brought us into this world in one way or another. Yeah. Well, if you make it to 18 and you don't have at least one complex, your parents did not do their job effectively. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and this woman's got a bunch of them. So not only was she from New York City, she had the accent and all. Uh, oh, God. I, I don't, I find, I don't, I'm not even attracted <laughs> to that. She did not shut up. And the gist of everything that spewed from her, from her mouth was, look how tough I am. Listen to how smart I am. Let's see how interesting I am. What are you, a fucking world traveler? That sounds like a typical Karen. <laughs> I wonder if she's got the haircut. Or a Tamika. A Tamika or a Yolanda. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gents, I am a former ranger, qualified intra- infantryman with deployments to Iraq, Afghanistan, have an engineering degree, work in the aerospace field, train jiu-jitsu, and have a concealed carry permit. My kind of dude. All right. All right. So basically, my response to her never-ending rants was a discreet and thoroughly unimpressed eye roll towards the retired therapist talking shit about how she'd fuck up the loud neighbors as she struggled to get out of her car seat. Uh-huh. So she's so fat. She, she, and she used to be a therapist. Jailed. Which means no connection to reality, shit talker, arrogant, and then I would say ignorant as and well. And if she was still doing therapy, it would be gender affirming care. Oh my God. I'm sure you can imagine how hard I bit my tongue whenever she spoke. This is bad enough if I saw her for a monthly dinner between my girlfriend and I. That wasn't the case. Mm. She was always there. <laughs> My girlfriend lived on her mom's property in a separate house. (laughs) So she's living in the mother-in-law suite on his soon-to-be mother-in-law's property. The irony is stunning. Yeah, I I couldn't do that. (laughs) At first, this seemed like a harmless arrangement. Yeah, until you find the, you know, you go upstairs to use the restroom in the main house and you discover a telescope and a box of donuts pointed toward the bedroom window of her daughter's place because, you know, endless love. As a dude... I'm going to give you a piece of advice, gentlemen. Never, under any circumstances, move into an abode where a woman has already lived. Don't do that. That is bad. Bad. If you decide to do that uh, cohabitating thing, you get a new place, you both start off fresh there. Yes, because if you move in... To your woman's house, it's always going to be her house. Yeah, well, there's a pop- never going to be ours. You're stepping immediately into a lopsided power dynamic. Dy- exactly. Yeah, and I mean, it's really awkward for everybody the first time you try to sneak the black light in so you can make sure you can't see her bed from space. Mm-hmm. You know, just. I mean that that's what happened to me when I got married. I moved into her house, and oh. I remember when I walked down the driveway for the last time, loading oh. up all my shit. <laughs> I was just like. I am never. This was never my home. Doing this again. That's oh. right. <laughs> it's bad news, bears, man. Yep. Like we said, half of the stuff we tell you guys to avoid on this show, we him did it. or I or both of us have done it. Yeah. Just saying. So he says, at first, this seemed like a harmless arrangement. Her mom seemed to respect our privacy when I spent weekends there that you know of. <laughs> she enjoyed baking and would frequently text my girlfriend to let her know that she had a fresh loaf of bread or scones that we could have. See, now I can see how he might have turned his back on some of the red flags because fastest way to a man's heart. Food bribery. There you go. Yep. There's a lot of dudes out there who it, will. I, I mean, you, you threw in with the hogs because you got a lasagna afterward. Am I right? Yeah, well... Well, one well, not in, every hog. No, but, one know. in particular, she was a little on the you know, you know German side because she cooked well. <laughs> yeah. Well, every time I offer to bring him home cooked food, and I tell him what it is, he's like, "You motherfucker! I'm trying to lose weight. You're trying to get me fat." <laughs> yeah, he showed up like a cinnamon bun last week. It was homemade. Yeah. He calls me up. He's like, yeah, my uh, my wife just made cinnamon buns, and, uh, you know, we're not going to eat them all. You want me to bring one? I'm like, you motherfucker. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> it was good, though, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I got to get that dish back from you. Yeah, I got to watch. It's in the, it's in the sink. Again. It's, a, it's in the sink, attracting flies and maggots. It's all good. Well, we're not to maggots yet. Oh, okay. 
That, that's important to know. That's, <laughs> there's a difference between being just unclean and being unsanitary. <laughs> it's just slime right now. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody blows her nose and you want to keep it. Uh, she was also extremely handy around her home and would get disgruntled when I had to call in a tradesman as she liked to be able to fix things herself. That's, see, that, I can see where that, some of these red flags are balancing out here. Okay, I, I, I'm totally behind that. I simply told myself that no one was perfect and everyone had some poor qualities. She was the only family my girlfriend had, so I tried to be understanding and patient with her mother. Unfortunately, things got worse. And they probably got worse because, you know, she's an uber-feminist liberal. That's probably true. Conditioned to have a masculine mind, and another dude shows up, they're going to butt heads. As our relationship progressed, her mom began to go out with us more and more. Oh, boy. Yeah. You got a dud foodie call times two. These were not pleasant evenings as she would typically dominate the conversation. These were not short get-togethers, but usually multi-hour events. As they lived in the country, they were 20 minutes from a pretty decent-sized town with nice restaurants and scenery. When she was with us, we would always head to the place that was an hour away. This happened way too much. I tried polite methods to not have to listen to her nonsense. Reading was impossible anywhere near her since she wouldn't shut up. Headphones were not well received by her or my girlfriend. <laughs> He's trying. Yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. really trying. I explained to my girlfriend that I liked her mom, but just didn't want to listen to her talk for three hours straight. Sir? Sir? Are, 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 are you listening to me, sir? Later in the relationship, I calmly told my girlfriend that I felt like her mom was slowly third-wheeling her way into our relationship. And she was. Yeah. <clears throat> we could do a whole episode on third-wheeling. Oh, yeah. This happens with friends. It happens with family. I simply thought that it was odd that her mom wanted to go out with us all the time. To my girlfriend's credit, she did not freak out when I said that, but I was concerned when she claimed that her mom never really got to go out with us. It was like we were living in two different realities. Yeah, that is weird. Now, um, I don't have a problem, you know, meeting the in-laws or, you know, spending some major holidays and maybe a birthday or two. That, yeah. That's you're, that's to be expected. Yeah, and if you have, a, like, a sister or whatever family member that you're really close with, yeah, we can hang out once a month. No, no problem. Uh, or even if you come over, like, you know, once a week or twice a week. That, that's fine, but every single day. Yeah, and if it's to visit her, that's one thing, but if it's always when the two of them are together yeah. and always when they're going out somewhere, foodie call. Yeah, well, I was just going to say it's more like a uh, she's, mother-in-law she's, call. I mean, she, she's piggybacking off yeah. of the slot C return. One final story before we get into the breakup. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. The three of us drove into a major city for a festival. Naturally, it was a two-hour drive because at this point in the relationship, the universe had dick-tasted that whenever her mom accompanies us to an event, it must be at minimum a one-hour drive away. So not only do you have to deal with her for the event, you have to listen to the yeah, 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 wah, 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 one hour each way. My God. That's just terrible. That's like the first level of hell right there. <laughs> yes, it is. We got downtown, and my girlfriend pulled into a parking garage to park. The garage had construction crews everywhere. The jackhammers were deafening. My girlfriend was parking, and believe it or not, the two women started freaking out over something. I had no idea what they were freaking out about. The mom gets out of the car and starts critiquing the parking spot. I did not know what either my girlfriend or her mom were trying to accomplish. We were in a parking spot. What was the problem? It then became apparent to me that they were concerned that the spot was at one of the turning points in the garage, and they were concerned it would get swiped by a vehicle. Uh, that's semi-valid. But not a freak-out valid. No. The mom told me to get out of the car to see what I thought. Thoroughly frustrated, I looked at the car, saw it was in a parking spot, and yelled over the construction equipment. My simple male brain directed my mouth to utter the words that blew their clearly superior female brains. I said... I think it's in a parking spot. If you don't like where it's parked, move it. <laughs> now, it'd be one thing if you're like over the line or something. Okay, I'll, I'll straighten it out. What this individual is doing was what I do is my mantra in my mind when I encounter idiocracy. 
I just kind of put my fingers together and go, oh. fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and everything gets easier. Huh? Ha. Who knew? Like a lot of the feminists, they, they have to worry and natter about everything. Of course. They don't have the fuck it switch. No. Unless, you know, it's during their cot carousel days. Well, especially modern feminism. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a culture of perpetual self-inflicted outrage. Yes. Because they're the most coddled, catered to gender on the planet. Well, they were at least up until recently. And uh, in response to that, because they wanted to keep that dough coming in, they had to figure out other reasons to still be oppressed. Keep clean, you know, crying about are. bull crap. But that's neither here nor there. You'd have thought, I just told the two of them I wasn't impressed by their advanced degrees. There was no immediate backlash. That's the worst kind, brother. That's the worst kind. Yeah. They're going to stew in it. Yeah. Well, you, he hit the self-destruct button in their brain pan. <laughs> yeah. That's when they, uh, they put aside the hurt locker and they decide to go for a, uh, a dip in the hurt slow cooker. It really seals in the flavor, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer an immediate explosion, because then I can mediate it. Uh -huh. When they walk away silent but deadly, you're like, oh boy. There we I'm going to pay for this in like two hours. Yeah. It, or, it, or worst case, tomorrow. Oh, it could be any time in the future. You yeah. make a deposit into the fight bank. Mm -hmm. You have no idea when the interest is going to come back to yeah. after life up. Yeah, or if you're like my brother, Zach, uh, 10 years. Yes. Yeah. And, and a few firemen later. Not that you would know about that. Right? Yeah, that's all rumor control. <laughs> yeah, it's all rumor, rumor control. control. That's all I could say. I'm not, not saying anything in particular happened one way or the other. My girlfriend talked to me days later. Oh, here we go. And I explained I was yelling over the construction equipment. She encouraged me to apologize and explain it to her mom, which I did. I even bought her flowers. Oh. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> that is mistake. the surrender flag for simps. Yep. Rookie mistake. Yeah. As soon as you gave in to having an opinion, your power in that relationship took a nosedive. Yeah, you just took a w raging sucker punch on Apologizing would have been like a couple of steps down. Uh -huh. Giving her mom flowers, that's, that's swan diving onto the page. Yeah, you should never apologize when people are condescending to you anyway. Aren't you going to apologize? Okay, I'm sorry that you were such a condescending prick and I had to stand up for myself. Are we done? All right, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> Do it! Her mom actually laughed it off and acted like she had forgotten it. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's the worst kind. Now for the breakup. This ought to be good. Girlfriend and I would have our Christmas early since I would be going home from my parents several states over, and she would stay with her mom. At this point in the relationship, she's well aware that I'm shopping for a ring, and she's already communicated what kind she wanted. Foolish mortal. Foolish mortal. I should note that she wanted a simple ring and nothing extravagant. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just going to say it is very rare that a woman who tells you she wants a simple ring actually means it. It's, yeah, that is rare. They will tell you that they want a simple ring because they want you to go above and beyond to prove your love. <laughs> if you actually get them the simple ring, they're going to say yes, they're going to pretend to be happy, and then a Reddit thread is going to appear a few days later. Or she'll just talk mad amounts of trash about you behind your back to her friends who are all going to say, you can do better. You want to go out to the club with us? It's been so long. I mean, it's like he's really controlling in this relationship. And that happens all the time. She even encouraged me to ask her mom for help. I politely turned that down. That's smart. And told her this is something I wanted to do myself. Mm -hmm. We opened presents, and one of hers was essentially this three-dimensional puzzle that you put together. And when complete, it looks great on a desk, bookshelf, or mantle. I thought it would be fun for us to put it together. I also offered to just do it myself if this wasn't her thing. Mm -hmm. uh. Well, lo and behold, the product I bought was counterfeit. Ooh. Missing pieces, bad directions, etc. Shocker, shocker. I also forgot to bring the glue. I apologized and ordered another one on the spot. Unfortunately, it wouldn't arrive until after Christmas. But hey, it's the thought that counts, right? You would think, yeah. Right. <laughs> Wrong. After that weekend, I spent a few days buying birthday gifts for her. 
and this is when I ordered the engagement ring through a local store. I picked out the diamond, and they would order the band and put it together. I was excited. It'd be simple, yet beautiful ring, and it would be for me. I did it myself, paid for it myself, and I was proud of it. I have See what drink. happens here. Pop is already getting ready to drink. <laughs> yep. Well, when he said, I'm buying an engagement ring, I'm pouring a drink, <laughs> mourning the loss of a fellow red pill MGTOW individual. <laughs> hey, this story's not over yet. They're getting ready to break up, remember? Well, then I will turn this into a celebration drink. <laughs> That he was uh, able to evade the crazy. <laughs> See, that's the wonderful thing about alcohol is that it applies in so many situations yeah. and situations. Yes, it does. Because of this, I felt the ring would really represent me wrapped around her finger. You have no idea how true that statement is. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I'm not sure if you meant it that way when you wrote it, but it sure is true now. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> the night before I went home, we had a very pleasant night out to see the Christmas sights, and we're back at her place. Of course, she then had to ruin the night by saying that she was pissed that one of her gifts was counterfeit, and that I didn't buy her anything to make up for it. I told her it was obviously an accident, and it wasn't fair to hold that over my head like that, mm -hmm. and that I had reordered it. I then told her that I actually spent the last couple of days buying birthday gifts for her. This did very little to calm her down. Well, she's suffering from entitlement syndrome. Yeah. That's basically the seeds for living a life of keeping yep. up with the Joneses. The first time he said yes to taking her mom with them when he didn't want to, this was inevitable. Yep. Since at this point in the relationship, I was little more than a whipped shadow of myself, I sighed, apologized, just so I can have some semblance of peace for the rest of the evening. Ugh. There you go. You didn't stick to your guns, man. So you lost is, your frame. It, it, it starts out, it's just little things, but over time, each little thing is a bullet in the chamber or the clip, magazine, whatever you want to call it. And, and just remember. You're not holding the gun. The biggest mountains made of granite mm -hmm. are now the sand of the beaches today. Look, I understand you're in a relationship. You're trying to take it uh, so more serious. Yeah. So you're overlooking a lot of the bad behavior. That is one of the biggest mistakes men make because that bad behavior only amplifies over time. Yeah. And it literally will turn your life into a living hell. That is why only one in five men who actually stay married uh, have any semblance of contentment or happiness. But let's continue. Mm. The next morning, all seemed to be right with the world. Before I left, I told that one of the gifts I got her was quite expensive and not a birthday present. She obviously read the genuine excitement and pride on my face and seemed happy. She asked if I asked her mom for advice, and I again explained I wanted to do this to myself and that it was important to me. Okay. This didn't seem to upset her at all, and I left feeling genuine excitement for my life with her. And then her mother saw the ring. My God, she must have been good in bed. Uh. <laughs> I got home late that evening. My parents met her several times and absolutely adored her. They were genuinely sad that she wouldn't be there for Christmas. I told my parents that evening that I had bought a ring, and they were ecstatic. Oh, my God. Starting Christmas Day and for several days later, later, I could tell something was off with my girlfriend. I don't think I have to elaborate further. Everyone here knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> A few days after Christmas, I was driving home. Again, I was aware something was wrong, but figured she may just be in a mood. I was about an hour away from home when I called her. Again, she was behaving strangely. I asked her what was wrong. Somebody getting their stock and stuff for Christmas. And it began <laughs> yeah. the most brutal emotional onslaught of my life. Dude, you're just too young for this. <laughs> uh, the thing is, we have no idea how young he is. Because he has not alluded to his age, her age. If he's younger than 40, he's, he's too young for this. You don't yeah. need this frustration this early in your life. No, shit. You don't need it at any time in your life. This should be on your Murtaugh list from Listen, the time you sprout pubes. Well, 40 to 50 is that portion of every man's life where you encounter the most frustration. Yeah. You got to get those, the, the, that next level. You got to get the promotions. It, it, that yeah. decade is tough. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just about to enter it. Uh, yeah, there you go. She had talked to her mom on Christmas about me and walked away from that conversation doubting everything. Uh, 
She laid into me about not including her mom in the purchase of the engagement ring, how she was embarrassed when her friends had asked what I had gotten her for Christmas since one of the gifts was botched, and I guess she was underwhelmed by my gifts in general, and I didn't seem to put much thought into my gifts because, of course, she's a mind reader. Nice. Yeah. The ring was a big deal for her. She had told me what size she thought she was, so that was the size I got. Apparently, when discussing that with her mom, her mom claimed that she knew the ring's size and would have happily told me if I had asked. I had purchased the ring in the size my girlfriend had provided. She then called me stupid or arrogant for daring to try and purchase the ring on my own without the help of her mom. Yeah, you should have walked out as soon as the word stupid came out. Yeah. Because that that is literally... The uh, shot across the bow yep. of disrespect. And this is not uncommon at all. No. I have had to deal with this in the wedding industry, where a couple will get a film back, and they love it. I want 15 extra copies so I can give this out to my family and friends all over the world. Awesome. Uh-huh. Then mom sees it. And there Next you thing go. you know, I'm getting character assassinated. Because mom wasn't happy, and she managed to convince mentally weak daughter that she shouldn't be happy either. This shit happens all the time. That's why it is so important to recon the mother. She pivots back to the counterfeit gift and how I forgot the glue to put it together and starts claiming that because of that, I would forget batteries for our children's toys. Yes, I'm serious. Wow. All right. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. She's already looking for excuses to get out of this. She's already she's been wanting to check out for a while. Yeah. You can tell, and mom has been behind the scenes egging her on. Yeah, I'm pretty much silent at this point because there's no getting around her. Then finally, she claims that her mom thinks that I hate her because apparently I never say hi to her. False. Never acknowledge her. False. And I never make eye contact with her. Triple dog. False. Her mom also claimed to be afraid of me because the parking garage incident showed that I had a mean streak. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, the the construction equipment was just a figment of his imagination, right? I wouldn't consider that a mean streak. No. You know, as a man, you're entitled to frustration responses. Well, it it wasn't even a frustration response. There was jackhammers going off in the distance, and he had to raise his voice to be heard. Okay. It's about as practical a reason for raising the volume as you can get. Yeah, oh, it's practical, but even if he was frustrated and raised his voice, so what? Yeah, who gives a shit? Never, ever apologize to these women, dudes. Ever. Nope. You give them an angry inch, they take the damn mile. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Just the tip. I think we all know what she was implying to my girlfriend. Her mom claimed that she would actively avoid us on the weekends when I was over because of this perceived hatred. Gents, she hung out with us every damn weekend. At this point in the argument, I was getting close to her place, and I offered to continue this conversation in person. She said there was nothing to talk about and that we should consider putting the ring on hold. I was devastated and was becoming physically ill at this point due to the stress. When I got home, I offered to give her mom a call, perhaps apologize and explain that I don't hate her, and whatever differences we have, we can work out. She told me not to. At this point, I was lost and barely knew who I was anymore. I did the only thing I could do. I went to my contacts, and I pressed home. Okay. Both my parents are boomers and have been happily married to each other for decades. Both had fathers who were pilots in the Army Air Corps during the Second World War and mothers who were homemakers. Needless to say, both had been raised in strict, stable, and loving households. My father was a truck driver most of his life and then got into flipping houses just before the 08 housing crash. My mom stuck with him through everything. They are not your typical miserable married couple. See, this is one of the one in five right One in five, yeah. It's awesome. My dad answered, and we exchanged a few pleasantries before I squeaked out a timid, Dad, I need help, before I audibly broke down into tears. Well, that's a bad bad conversation. That's a bad conversation. No father wants to to see his son in that that, uh, condition. My dad was damn near yelling over the phone to tell him what was wrong. I could hear my mom asking my dad what was happening in the background. I told them my girlfriend asked me to put the ring on hold, and I told them everything that I've written above and plenty that I haven't. Mm -hmm. I'd never gone into detail with my parents about my relationships, so I wasn't even sure what to expect from them. After about 30 minutes of talking, I finally ran out of steam. My dad, in a tone that I had not heard in many years, said, Son, I'm going to give you some very frank advice. You probably aren't going to like it, but you need to hear it. That's the best advice. Yep. 
I braced myself for a speech on how I needed to fix it, apologized to her mom, listened to my girlfriend's needs, etc. Again, they absolutely loved my girlfriend. My dad uttered a single word. Run! (laughs) (laughs) Yes! Yes! That's exactly what he should say. Oh, yeah. I like it. From hundreds of miles away, my dad loaded a red pill-tipped AT4 and fired it straight down my throat. Nice. My parents spent the next hour confirming everything I thought about the situation. My girlfriend was high off her ass getting mad about presents and my decision to not include her mom in the purchase of a ring. She was behaving like a child in general. Her relationship with her mom was at best, weird, at worst, toxic. Uh-huh. They agreed that her mom sounded like a completely insufferable biatcha and also didn't understand why a woman in her late 50s would want to hang out with her daughter and her boyfriend so much. My dad was not coddling me during this conversation. When I relayed the things she said to me, he said, and you just took that? Are we done? I felt embarrassed, but it was what I needed to hear. He also at one point said, son, crying time is over. It's time to be a man. My dad had seen this play out over and over again with friends and family, and he would be damned if he saw it happen to his own son. Oh, yeah. Good call. Yes. He would make me see the light or ruin our relationship trying. Good for him. Yeah. Short-term mean, long-term nice. By the end of the conversation, I had made up my mind that I was done with her. My mom encouraged me to wait a few days, but warned me that even if she came crawling back with an apology, this would happen again. Oh, That's a woman who understands female nature, too, and isn't afraid to let a man in on it. That also is exceedingly rare. Yes, it is. Most women will cover for each other. I don't know if they do it consciously, but they do do it all the time. Well, shit, just look at your divorce. Your family sided with your ex. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, you're right. Show some damned respect. Within a matter of hours, my future had gone from this wonderfully warm (laughs) image of her and I raising children to a long, lonely existence as a single man. My dad ended the conversation with something I never thought I'd hear my father ever say. Son, I'd rather have you a little lonely visiting a whorehouse once a month than in a miserable marriage. That's good. Yep. All day long, man. At the end of the day, if what you are sticking around for is what happens between the sheets, you can get that anywhere. And you're you're effing up. That's the bottom line. Never, ever trade in your self-respect for a piece of poo because that shit's a dime a dozen. And you know what does that all the time? Mm. Dick thinking. There you go. Especially when you're young and dumb and full of stuff that rhymes with the dumb. The next morning, I called my parents again. We had all calmed down, and my dad's opinion hadn't changed. However, he did say calmly that it was completely my decision, and he would support me no matter what. I said my mind was made up, and he said that I was making a good decision. I waited out the next few days with no contact from her. The stress had made me ill, so I generally shuffled around the apartment. Every hour that passed, the deep emotional connection I had with her dissipated even further. By the time I finally called her, I viewed breaking up with her like one would view taking out the trash. That's a good mindset to be in. Yep, you're getting his frame back. Just something I needed to do. Two phone calls and no response later, I said, screw it, and sent a text. It was blunt, but nice. The read receipt arrived instantly, meaning she definitely saw my missed calls and didn't respond. She responded to the text curtly, and it was over. My dad said he was proud of me. People at the jewelry store could not have been nicer and cut me a check on the spot. You got lucky on that one. Got very lucky. Now that the dust is settled, this is what I believe waited for me in that marriage. Her mother would have been an absolutely destructive force in our relationship. Well, would have been. She already was. She already was, yeah. It is clear now that my girlfriend's priority was and will be her mother, not me. When I mentioned other locations we could move, two to three hours away from where we are, in the event my place of business closes down, she responded that she would not move. To clarify, as an engineer in the current location I'm in, if I lose my job, there's nothing else for me in this area. I'd have to move to find a job I'm qualified for. Yep. She responded to this by saying I can start over in another field or possibly teach. Two things I'd like to avoid at all costs. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no one likes to waste that kind of time. Yeah, Shit. I gotcha. It, it's easy to say that when it's not you doing it, always. Well, you could just 
you know, start over. You do something else. Yeah. All right. So this is the female capacity for thinking, I got time. Yeah. No. No, you don't. Your eggs are drying up. Stop it. How dare you? Uh, she would do anything she could to stay near her mom, even at my expense. She was also trying to get me to work closer to where we believed we would live. Again, there were no jobs for me outside of where I worked, but that didn't seem to register with her. To summarize, the closer to my work you get, the further from her mom. Now that her mom has clearly established herself as a grim old worm tongue in this story, <laughs> this is how I believe this marriage would have played out. We buy a house, get married, have kids. For the hundredth time, I come home at 6 or 6.30 since it's an over-hour commute for me, and we wanted to be a little closer to mom so she can help with the kids. Uh -huh. Her mom and now wife have been silently talking about how I never pick up the kids and how I'm coming home from work late. I now realize that her mom would not have been in the shadows giving us a hand when we needed it and perhaps coming over for dinner once a week. No, she would have been in my house constantly. Oh, yeah. That's I would have, yep. hell on earth. I would have come home from work every night to that insufferable woman communicating every single thought that pops into her head. I would have come home to hell every single night. Ooh. You're a thousand percent correct. Yeah, you are. That's exactly how it would have gone down. Yeah, it's, oh my God. Yeah, clearly some distance from the situation has given you some wisdom. Yes, I hate her now, but when I was with her daughter, I quietly accepted her for who she was and shrugged it off. I think it broke her brain that someone came into her life who wouldn't acknowledge how intelligent, charismatic, funny, and amazing she was. I think what truly drove her insane, though, is that I clearly did not give a flying fornication what she thought of me. Thus, unlike her daughter, she was unable to manipulate me. I don't think she consciously thought this, but the result was that she probably felt deeply unsettled around me. I could, yeah, I can see that. I can see that for sure, yeah. If she has become so accustomed to manipulating her daughter like a chess pawn, and it doesn't work on you, that's why she started attacking her daughter's thought process as it pertained to you, because then she could manipulate you by proxy. Yeah, and, and even women friends do the same thing. Yes, they do, all the time. Let's say you're married, and your woman has a friend who's getting divorced, do not let her hang out with that friend if you value your marriage. Yes. Because yes. what's going to happen is she's going to want to go out and relive the single life with her friends, even if they're still married, the one who's getting divorced. And sooner or later, she's going to try to bait the hook. This is so much fun. It's so much yep. more carefree. Don't you wish you were single again? There you go. Because you are the product of the closest six people you have in your life. There you go. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that she would have been undermining my marriage and usurping me in my own house. She would affirm whatever bullshit my wife would have been upset about and the marriage would have fallen apart. One thing I know for sure, if I had called my parents and complained about my Christmas presents from her, I would have been told to grow up. Yeah. That's exactly what would have happened. I don't even ask for... The only presents I accept is food. Maybe a well, card. Go, yeah. I, I, don't, I require nothing. I don't care. Yeah, because men actually recognize that when it comes to gifts, it's the thought that counts. Uh -huh. And if they really want it, they get it themselves. Exactly. That's what I do as a dude. I'm like, I really want that. I'm going to get it. Yep. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to get it for me. That's the end of my story. Even though I was well-versed on red pill content, I found myself making terrible mistakes as my girlfriend slowly manipulated me into the whipping husband she wanted. I would say if I had treated my girlfriend like a child throwing a tantrum, I would have saved myself some pain. You're absolutely correct. However, I am now a much wiser man looking to share what I have learned. I'm also planning to move to a part of the country that I absolutely love and she hated, so I couldn't be happier. Good. Thank God for both of my parents who were there to help keep me from making a terrible decision. Again, what I wanted to highlight were my dad's words. Not everyone has a dad like that, and hopefully it helps some men out there who find themselves in a bad situation. Yep. The tears that have welled up since the breakup have been those of pure gratitude towards my dad, who probably saved my life. He probably did. And this woman has an excuse for her sling back, gift-wrapped. I didn't realize my mom was so toxic. She she stopped us from being so happy. Blah blah blah. No, I, or, or I miss what we had. Yeah, you knew what was going on. You thought that you could make him your whipping boy forever, and he would just put up with it. But then you would have just cheated on him. Let's be honest, you probably cheated on him anyway. Yep. Yep. At the end of the day, you are better off 
obviously are much happier, and let these people wallow in the quagmire and cesspool of misery and loneliness that they've created for themselves because they're going to stink like it. Yeah, they are. It, it, they did it to themselves. Yep. So thank you very much, good sir, for sending us in this story. I hope that it helps a lot of guys out there who have been in similar situations like this. Because as much as we've gotten you know, emails and stories from people, I don't think we've had one specifically about the mother coming in and really... Yeah, and that's very common. It's very common. It's extremely common. That's why you recon the mother. If I remember to, I'm going to try to put a link to that throwback episode in the description on redonkulous.com so you guys can watch it. Glean some wisdom, save yourself a headache, and we'll see you next time.